I got some cool looking obsidian. I had the shop door open, so hopefully it doesn't mess with the the lighting. The sun should go down in a little bit. So let's see. Um sun sunset is in about 45 minutes. We'll see. I do want to <clears throat> I do want to nap this one into one of those fancy bitterroot points so that's what I'm gonna do I've had this little biface sitting around for a while wondering what am I gonna make what am I gonna make do I just make a bunch of bifaces or do I actually want to make some points this time around again it's been hard for me to get back in the groove this week yeah Been a little bit difficult. I have an idea about uploading videos since it takes forever to upload a video. I should just film and save my videos on my phone until like Monday or something and then upload them to the internet but don't don't make them public right away just wait and then make one public every day right just spend all day monday at the library uploading all my videos for the week i try uploading stuff overnight sometimes i forget we shall see Yeah, the phone reception is not good. I'm, I'm eventually going to get different internet and all that. I'm thinking of canceling some of the services we have now. Uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with my dad's TV watching. But yeah, eventually I'm going to have to upgrade. Because this is getting ridiculous. Yeah. I also don't feel like doing a video if, it, if I know it's going to take forever to upload. That's all I need. Just one more discouraging thing. My new phone can handle a bunch of videos in storage now. I'm pretty sure I can store like 10 videos without a problem. 10 hours or so of videos. But more than that... I'm going to have to start storing them on my computer or on a, a separate device. My tablet can't support or can't store anything on that. It's got such a small amount of memory. Yeah. I'll just start storing them on my computer. I got a high speed cable, so I just need to sit down and figure out the technicalities of storing them on my computer. Get an app or something to transfer them over. There's a, gotta get an app for everything these days. And then free up my phone. I can do a video every day, yeah. That's not much of a problem. The thing is, storing them on my phone uses up the memory. And I never know when the phone's going to cut out once I start getting full. It'll give me a little warning up here that I've only got like 20 minutes left or whatever. But I hate that because in order to get rid of that warning, I've got to upload a video or transfer it or do something. I haven't figured out how to transfer them yet to my computer. Anyways... What did I do here? I crunched it. This is high grade. This is pretty high grade stuff. As far as obsidian goes. But I'm not doing that well. This is that cinnamon looking obsidian. 
Yeah. It was a gift. I can't collect this on my own. I have not been up to Glass Buttes or anything. And I've never lived anywhere near where there there is obsidian deposits. So all the obsidian that I nap, I either purchase or I get as gifts. And this was a gift. And it's excellent stuff. Gotta focus. Yeah, it's sweet. Man. There's no excuse. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't have any excuses if I mess this up. It's all on me. This is excellent stuff. How can I tell? Oh, what's the difference between excellent obsidian and not so good obsidian just the edge quality is it crushing a lot no is it easy to grind down yes do, do the flakes travel where i think they're gonna go is it consistent yes it checks all the right boxes yeah it doesn't crush on the edges i mean i make mistakes uh the flakes run really well You know, and all that good stuff. It checks all the right boxes. I just have to be very careful that I don't snap it. Because it is obsidian after all. It's not it's not miracle stone. It's just very high grade. It helps to use copper too. Copper seems to grab the edge of obsidian very well. Aluminum does too, but aluminum is a little bit softer and it pulls a little bit too much, I think. Copper is a good happy medium, happy middle ground. Why happy? When everything's working well, it makes you happy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Those two concepts can be in the same sentence. Obsidian and happiness. Yep. It is possible. Okay, it's too sweet. Yeah, after napping that basalt, stuff is like luxurious. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta put my glove back on. I've been doing yard work with these gloves and stuff and peeling arrow shoots and stuff and I'm getting the, I'm getting them all stained up. They're not pretty for the video. I got a bunch more, don't worry. I got some very generous subscribers that keep me supplied with all kinds of stuff. And that last video with the Notchomatic, I don't want anyone to think bad about the Notchomatic that it didn't work on the, for me on the basalt. Yeah, it's gonna, for me to get good at using it on the basalt and similar materials, it's gonna require a lot of practice. Because that, that tool is very powerful. Anyway. Just wanted to clear it up, that's not the tool, it was, it was me. I I tend to be a, quite aggressive with it. Like all my tools, I tend to be quite aggressive 
with them. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't install a curve while I'm thinning. It's very easy to do with obsidian because it does nap really well and easily, relatively speaking. So you can get carried away and go, wait a second, wait a second, I took too much off of that one side, that one face. Dang it. Yeah, very easy to do that. Take too much off. That glove is, it's almost getting in the way. But I'm still removing relatively large flakes, so I still want to keep it on. Once I get down to thinner flakes and smaller flakes, I'll take the glove off. This is going to be a bitter root point. Yeah. I got plenty of room. I'm thinking about the size. The size of this is more in line with the real ones. I do need to take the glove off. That was an incomplete flake. See that? It's just a little bit. It traveled just a little bit. It's an. Ins it's a. Uh, only partially detached. Dang it! So you can see the edge of that crack right there. It's not good when these are only partially detached. Why does that happen? I didn't put enough force in it. Uh, one of the reasons is I'm not getting the right feedback. When I'm wearing the gloves, I can't really tell. There it is. I felt much better. I can't really tell how much force is being absorbed by the stone. But when I have the glove off, I get the feedback much more easily. Yeah. Some people don't like napping obsidian because it, <clears throat> you run the risk of cutting yourself. The uh, more careful you are in trying to judge the material, the, the more of a chance you're going to cut yourself because you're going to Probably not wear the gloves. Probably going to be dealing with lots of sharp edges and not abrading all that much. You know, I don't want to keep abrading every single time I strike a flake off, so there's going to be some sharp edges hanging around. Yeah, I'm not going to go back and dull every edge. So you run the risk of cutting yourself that way, just by holding the, the workpiece or rubbing your finger across one of those sharp edges. Anyways, with high grade obsidian, it, it, feels, it feels a little odd that I have to strike it so hard in comparison to the lower grades of obsidian. Yeah, it makes it makes me a little nervous. But the results are nice. Oh yes. The uh, higher grade obsidian a lot of times requires a, a harder hit. Very similar to flint. Or high grade material. Of other types. Yeah. 
I'm not going to go much thinner than that. I, I can go thinner, but I don't want to. Nope. I've got to clean up the surface and get rid of some of these surface cracks. These incipient surface cracks that does, they don't detach fully. You might say, well, is that really high grade stuff if those flakes are not detaching fully? Yeah. I just got to get used to napping it. A lot of times I'm not using enough force. I'm thinking it's really weak because obsidian is usually really weak, but it's not weak. This stuff is strong. Stronger than normal. It's not strong. There it goes. It's not strong, right? But it is resistant to the strike, so I need to I need to use more force than I want to. Yeah. The reason why I'm putting a band-aid on is I don't want it to get I don't want that to get all over the arrowhead and get all messy. Man, some band-aids big. This is a big old band-aid, dang it. I don't want a big old band-aid. Oh well. Beggars can't be choosers. That's what I have available within five seconds. We're just going to have to make do with what I got. And where are the gloves? Pushed on the face of that step fracture. Yeah, that's cheating a little bit. I might have been able to nap that away, but so much easier just to do a little push on the front of that step fracture. Yeah. It's not perfect, but at least it flattens it out. So that the next flake through that area doesn't have so much of an issue. Okay. I can probably pressure flake the rest of this. But. If you know me. I don't like to expend too much energy in the beginning. I save my energy for the end. For the final finishing stage. I don't want to be all tired on the final finishing stage. That's the most important stage. Final finishing. Some might say, no, the most important stage is getting it set up. To be thinned and then thinning it. Yeah. The people who, uh, who say... Thinning is not everything. It's the only thing. Yeah. Then yeah, that's if that's your mentality, then yeah, that the thinning stage is the most important. I think the finishing stage, doing the finishing touches and the sharpening is the most important. It can be a thick point with a nice sharp edge, and it works great. Oh yeah. That coarse abrader is too coarse. Of course it's too coarse. Yeah, I know. It just saves time if I use a coarse abrader because it wipes out all the weak spots really quickly. But it can also wipe out the edge way too good and uh, leave you not much to work with. Yeah. See, that flake was able to travel into that area without resistance. I couldn't have done that if that step fracture was still there. I still feel like I'm going to be installing a curve. I'm 
What am I doing? I'm trying to flake in areas that I know I can remove a flake, but there's more to consider than just just opportunities. I need to think a little bit further ahead. Ah, that's a crack. I hope it doesn't go all the way through the material. Yeah, I think it'll be all right, but that's a bummer. I have to lose some of the edge to clean that up. Too much inward force. That's what happens when you're thinning. You run the risk of too much inward force. It doesn't like the inward force. I don't know if you've noticed. I think I'm noticing it. It doesn't like inward force or it doesn't like being thinned down too much it likes being thinned down a little bit that's it See if I can push more of that steppy area away. Yeah, that's okay. Obsidian is, it, obsidian is good for that, but it's just all flakery and crunchy right there. Mm-hmm. Time for pressure flaking. I think I'm reaching the limits on the percussion. Okay. Sharp point or dull point? Let's start with a dull point. No oh, day. Yeah, this is a lot different than the basalt. Pressure flaking is a whole different mindset with the obsidian. Why did I switch? I should have stayed with some tougher material. Now I'm going to be all messed up. I'm going to probably go back to tough material after this, this one here. Well, maybe not. I've got some heat treat. I'll probably do that. Yeah. It's not good to mix and match too much. You know, I like breaking up the boredom by napping different materials but it's not that great as far as results go if you switch too much it takes a few points just to get back into getting good with a certain material and if you're jumping around a lot you don't get a chance to get good with that certain material It pressure flakes well, yes, yes.
a little more percussion. Just a little more. Famous last words. Yeah, but just a little more. Oh, I did a reach. It tried to reach. See, I wanted it to reach into that flakery area. But, you know, I'm, I'm going against my own advice. I'm not supposed to be trying to do damage control with the end of the flake. But sometimes I can't resist. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, don't do it. I'm just going to tell you that it's risky. It, the riskiest part of the flake is the termination of it. You don't want to be doing that too much. You don't want to do damage control with the endings of the flake. See, I, it did pretty good. It, it went a little bit further than the rest of the flake. The rest of the flake terminated like right here. But this went a little further down that ridge because there was a slight ridge there. But it didn't go into this little area. So it's still kind of crunchy right there. I don't want to be scratching it with the... The diamond file. That would be dumb. Yeah. Did it do anything? I have a lump here. I just don't know where to attack it. I got several little lumps. That would be a hard flake to do with pressure. It's a very difficult flake to do with pressure. So I'm glad that worked out. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, I tried to do a perfect platform and what does it do? Nothing. How about that? Oh, yes. Beauty. bought some new files they work so good when they're brand new yep okay can't get too confident yeah if I think about it too much or I get too confident it's not good yeah there you go those that would I would have a hard time getting those long flakes with pressure Although it does pressure flake extremely well, like most obsidian. All right, so now I can just uh, even it up with pressure and do notching. Yeah. I wasn't too concerned about snap in half with this one. As you can see, the it, the long flakes that I get are are holding together. That's one indication that it, it's not very snap in halfish. If the flakes are not holding together, you know, you get a long flake, but it's all in pieces. That'll give you a clue that it's a snap and halfish type of material. You know, your skill level in removing flakes has a little bit to do with it also. But I think for the most part, if the flakes are breaking up as they travel, it's going to be a snap and halfish type of material. Yeah. What is snap and halfish? Oh, you're not a flint napper, so don't worry about it. Let's go back to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I think that's sufficiently good. It suffices. It suffices. All right.
what is the point that I'm trying to imitate? Why don't I get the book out so I can show everybody because they don't know what I'm talking about. They never heard of a bitter root point. They're thinking I'm confusing it with a plant. Well, maybe I am, but I will show you. Let's see. There it is. Bitter root, early to middle archaic. That's the one. And here's my preform. Plenty of room. Oops. I'm not going to make it that small. It's going to be bigger. And I'm going to, you know, again, try. I, this is my favorite one in here, so I'm going to try it for that one. Yeah. Got this at Barnes and Noble. Okay. 13th edition. They've got a newer one out. But get the older version. It's cheaper. And Barnes and Noble. Everyone else is trying to rip you off on the Overstreet Guide. Okay, so just be aware. Last time I checked, Barnes & Noble was the only thing, only place selling them for a reasonable price. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Everyone's trying to... Everyone's trying to scam everybody. All right. Oh boy. I'm trying to sharpen this without grinding it too much. I'm probably not going to be able to. No. Sometimes, as long as you can find a flat spot, you can push on it, but I don't know. Oh, I, I know what I need to do. I need to put on my more powerful glasses. Yeah. There we go. No wonder I can't see. Ah, uh, yes. No wonder I wasn't seeing so well. I'm really crouched over and my posture is yelling at me, but at least I can see. I can see my mess ups. I'll be notching close to there so maybe I can blow away that little area while I'm notching. I can hope. Yeah. So this is the most important part, I think. This uh, final finishing. Yeah, I mean, it requires a, the most amount of attention and energy, I think. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm here and I'm tired at this stage, it's not going to go well. So I didn't I didn't wear myself out. Yeah. No. Nope. And uh, it's good that I didn't put on my high power glasses yet because the posture has a lot to do with how well you nap. Also, right now I'm kind of cramped looking at this. So I can't hold this cramped position for too long. Luckily, I don't have to because I'm near the end of this this particular point. I 
swear that bird gets louder every day. I think he heard. Yeah, I think he heard me because he stopped. Yeah, he's still there. That's all crunchy. Dang it. I'm wearing a glove on the right hand also because when I'm pressure flaking the, the flakes get in between my hand and the and the flaker right when I don't want it to. Right when I'm trying to concentrate I'll get a flake between my hand and the flaker. shouldn't put such a delicate tip on the obsidian. Why? Because it breaks off as I'm napping. I guess still gotta do the notches. tip tends to break off as I do the other areas if I'm not careful. I've learned to be careful enough that I don't do that much anymore. But it still lingers in the back of my mind. How many tips have I broken off that way? Enough to where it always is a thought in the back of my mind. Yeah, that's how many times I've done it. You know, I finish the notching and go, oh, beautiful notches, turn it around, and there's no tip. Yeah, I've had that happen. It's no fun. It's not fun at all. No. Nope. Sometimes I get in a bad habit of holding my flaker in a weird way. And by weird, it's just an uncomfortable position, but I go with it anyway. I just need to align it, the flaker properly, and hold it in a comfortable position, and remove a flake. What's so hard about that? 
sometimes my brain doesn't think like that. It's too expedient. All right, okay, okay. I'm getting myself bored with this. Yeah, I'd rather have birds in the background than my little dogs. I hate to say it. Yeah. I do miss my little dogs down in Texas. But I don't miss the barking. Oh, no. nasties right there where I'm going to have to do the notching let's see all right here it is let's see if we can do this without ruining it no how does it get ruined well if you if I do a diving flake pushing on the front of the step fractures if it dives in it has a chance of ruining it okay so good enough i'm just going to start notching yes yes and these bitter roots they the notch starts right at the intersection of these two sides that side is uh, slanted there and this side slanted there so right at the point is where the notch is that's where they put the notch okay okay And that's pretty typical of a lot of different point styles. When the edge changes direction, I'll stick a notch there. Yeah, this is not thin enough. I forgot to do that. I forgot to thin this down before I started. Hold on. I had to thicken it up for the last video. Well, the next to the last video. too thick and I feel like I'm gonna hit the sides of the notch Also, you can press off flakes a little bit easier when it's the notch is thinner. If it's good, if it's good material, yeah. Hmm. 
This is just a 16 penny nail, okay? Nothing special. It's a bright box nail, not galvanized. And it's a box nail. Cheap and good. It has just the right amount of softness to it to grab the edge. And yes, steel can grab the edge. I like the nails. The nails work good. Going downward too much. Yeah, these notches go upward. Dang it. I got too carried away. Yeah, these notches are supposed to go upward into the point. All right. And the entry is more narrow than the rest of it. Yeah. Cool. Let's see, do I go further than that? Well, let's do the other side first before I decide how much further to go, if any. And try to do as narrow entry as I can without being too fancy. If I try to be too fancy, I'll blow off the one of the one of these sides, you know. It doesn't do any good to have a really narrow entry when you blow off one of the sides when it's not really necessary to to blow off one of the sides of the notch. Either the barb or the ear. It's not worth it. Are these going to be symmetrical? No. Dang it. Oh, well, they're not symmetrical in the book either. If nothing else, obsidian makes notching so much easier than other materials. My goodness. I just got to be careful I don't remove too much material. It's kind of a good problem to have. Yeah, I can thin my way into the notch. Yeah, it's always good to thin your progress, thin the material right bef in front of your path. Of the notch. By removing a big flake, that's exactly what you can do. It seems the neck on these is is uh, pretty narrow, so I need to go deeper with the notches. Okay, 49 minutes. See, I'm in danger of hitting the sides because this thing it's too thick. Yes, 
Yeah, that's a good. That's good enough. Who am I trying to impress? It's not like lots of people are watching or anything. I was hoping to get some of this flakery stuff out of the way with the notching, but it looked like it didn't work all that well. It don't work too well. Do it. It don't work too well. Do it. Okay. Can I pop a flake out of there? Maybe. Mm. Not really. Okay, time to just finish up. Looks like they did do a little bit of expanding downward as well. But that's good enough. Kind of crunchy down in the notch. Okay. All right. Time for the final finishing. I'm not going to use the gloves because they are really annoying me. Oh, yes. <laughs> the sides are constricted a little bit on the originals so that gives me a little bit of a chance to run some flakes to make it cleaner clean it up a little bit I don't trust myself. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one back on. Let's see. Let's move everything out of the way in case I drop this point. I don't drop it on anything. good
Yeah, it's a little crunchy right there, but oh well. Oh well. Beauty. Yeah. When it works good, it works really good. Home stretch. I still got a piece of glass right there. The, the, even that little bit bugs me. See that little booger right there? It's just a little bitty thing. But when I'm trying to focus, it, it, it interrupts me like a little fly in my cereal. When I used to eat cereal. <laughs> Don't eat it anymore. I should stop flitting that because that way I don't get it. I don't get the little annoyances. Okay. What are you doing eating cereal with the windows open, getting flies in the house? I don't know. I was dumb, I guess. I like to hear the Tweety birds outside when I'm eating breakfast. Yeah. If I had the option, I'll leave the door open. My mom would say, Patrick, the front door is open. It's open. I know, Mom. But you have to close it. <laughs> I know, Mom. Okay. Why moms like the front door closed? I don't know. It's got to be closed. Let's see, do I need to do any more? I need to. That's. I have a little step fracture there. It's not as beautiful as the other side. Let's see. Yeah. That's good. And I don't have to do this right here. I already sharpened the top. So I got I got it to where I like it. Yeah. See? Perfect match. Yeah. It's perfect. 
It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Yeah. Okay. I am going to try putting it into a heft. Since I found my little hefting collection, which one fits? Oh, that does fit so nicely. Yes, it does. There it is. Perfect. How did I know? I don't know. Maybe I've been flint napping before. Yeah? Maybe. So yeah, back in the day, I think they made a bunch of these ahead of time, mass produced the four shafts from patterns like this. These are all my patterns. And then just check the arrowheads and make sure they fit. And if they don't fit, you uh, adjust the arrowhead instead of adjusting the four shaft. Yeah. I think it's easier to thin down the base of the arrowhead than to mess with the four shaft. Although some guys might say, no, no, the woodworking is easier. Okay, fine. If it's for you easier, then take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. There it is. I like it. Cinnamon, obsidian, bitterroot point. Although it looks a little weird in this light through the viewfinder in person it looks pretty good yeah all right there it is there you go